Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this procedural shader in Blender. It is based on a trade stone. So let's get started. First, let's hit Shift A and add an icosphere. Go into edit mode and enable proportional editing. Select one of the vertices and press G and scroll your mouse wheel. Now let's select this one and press S. In the modifiers, add a subdivision surface modifier and set the levels viewport and render to 4. Enable X-ray and go into side view. Disable proportional editing and select these vertices. This is here, press S, set and zero, hit enter and now press G and set. Disable X-ray and go back into object mode, hit shift A, add a plane and press S. 10. Now select the rock and shade smooth. Go to shading, go into rendered view. You can use cycles or EV for this, but I prefer cycles because it looks a little better. If you want to create the same animation that you saw in the beginning, then go to color management and make sure that Fusion's transform is set to standard and the look to none. If you just want to create one render, then set the Fusion's transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast. If you want to create the animation, then we are going to do this later. Under the word properties, go to color and select environment texture. I will put a link to the one that I am using in the description. Once you've selected it, hit enter. With the rock selected, click on new. Set the subsurface to 0 0.025. Add a mix RGB and plug the color into the base color. Now add a wave texture and duplicate it. Plug this color into color 1. Set the scale to 2.5 and the distortion to 14.5. Let's also set the detail to 15. Set it from bands to rings and make it spherical and also set it to saw. Let's do the same here. Set it to rings make it spherical and set it to so. Plug the color into the vector. Now set the scale to 1 and the distortion to 76. Let's set the detail to 15 again. Add a Voronoi texture and plug the distance into color 2. Now take this color and plug it into the randomness. Let's go back to the principal BSDF and set the roughness to 0. By the way, if you want to have these previews here, you can get the no preview add-in for the link in the description. Add a color ramp. Put that here and duplicate it. For this one, let's put the black here and the white here. Now here, bring the white into somewhere around here and click on the plus sign twice. Bring this one closer to the black. And now let's move this one over here. For the white, I'm going to use this hex code here. You can copy it if you like. Here, I'm going to use this hex code. Here, I'm going to use this one. And for the black, let's use this one. Now select the plane and click on new. For the plane, I'm going to use an image texture. You can find a link to that in the description. Once you've downloaded it, select the principal PSDF and press Ctrl Shift T. Find the folder where you have the textures and press A and enter. Now let's save. Delete the normal map and add a bump node. And let's use the height here and plug the normal into the normal. Go back to layered mode. Select the stone and press delete on the numpad and 1. And now 8 twice. Hit shift A and add a camera. Control or 0 to go into camera view and press G and set twice to move it on the local set axis. And now press G and set. Add an empty plane axis. Here shift select the camera and press Ctrl P and select object. Now if we select the empty and rotate it, the camera is going to rotate along with it. Make sure you are on frame 1 and go to the object properties. Hover over the rotation and press I. You can leave the end frame at 250 if you want to, but I'm going to set it to 500. Go to the end here and go to the next frame. Here set the set to 360 and press I again. Now go down here and press T and select linear. Hit shift A and add an empty plane axis. Enable the snapping and set it to face project and press G. I'm going to put it here. Go to the object constraint properties and select shrink wrap. Select the stone. Now up here, click on the drop down here. Select the empty and control select the camera and press control P. Object. This empty is going to be our focus object for the camera. And now if we press play, it will move along with the camera and stay on the surface. Select the camera and go to the object data properties. Enable the for field and select empty 001. Let's go into rendered view. I'm going to set the f-step to 0.7 and the blades to 16. Let's go back to viewport shading. Go to compositing. You don't have to do this if you're using EV, but if you're using cycles, I recommend that you enable use nodes. 
Add a DNOS node set to accurate and enable denosing data. Go to the output properties, select the resolution that you want. Let's create a new output folder. For the file format, I'm going to use JPEG and set the quality to 100%. Now let's save again and press Ctrl F12. Once it's done rendering, close this window and go to video editing. Make sure you are in frame 1, hover over the file location and press Ctrl C. Set the file format to FFmpeg video. Go to encoding, set the container to MPEG4. And let's set the output quality to high quality. Now go to the render properties, go to color management, set the view transform to filmic and the look to very high contrast. Here hit shift A, image sequence, go to the folder where you have the images, press A and enter. Save again and press Ctrl F12. If you liked this tutorial, then you're probably also going to like to render this on screen now. I'll see you next time.